because of what society has labeled women to be. Chào các bạn, trong bài thi IELTS Listening, thí sinh chỉ có duy nhất một lần nghe, do đó chỉ cần một chút lơ là cũng khiến các bạn bị mất điểm một cách trầm trọng. Trong lúc luyện nghe, các bạn cần tập trung tinh thần, đặc biệt phải nghe bằng tai nghe, thay vì dùng loa hay bằng đài, bởi vì trong bài thi IELTS Listening Test, bạn phải dùng hoàn toàn tai nghe, nên đây là một cách rất tốt để luyện tập thói quen. Nào quân chiến trừ gì nữa, ngay bây giờ hãy cùng luyện tập bài số 4 trong chuỗi series IELTS Listening Test. Bởi vì trong phần thi IELTS Listening Test, bạn phải sử dụng hoàn toàn tai nghe. Nên đây là một cách rất tốt để tạo luyện thói quen. Nào còn chần chừ gì nữa, hãy đến ngay bài số 4 trong chuỗi series IELTS Listening Test. section you will hear a conversation between a woman and the librarian now you have some time to look at questions 1 to 6 now listen to the talk and answer the questions one to six good morning good morning can i help you yes i'd like to join the library we're new to the district you see hmm, certainly well all we need is some sort of identification with your name and address on it oh dear we just moved you see and everything has my old address a uh, driving license perhaps no i don't drive no, your husband's would do Yes, but his license will still have the old address on it. Hmm, perhaps you have a letter addressed to you at your new house. No, I'm afraid not. We've only been there a few days, you see, and no one's written to us yet. Well, what about your bank book? That's just the same. Oh dear, and I did want to get some books out this weekend. We're going on holiday to relax after the move, you see, and I wanted to take something with me to read. Well, I'm sorry, but we can't possibly issue tickets without some form of identification. What about your passport? What? Oh, yes, how silly of me. I've just got a new one, and it does have our new address. I've just been to book our air ticket, so I have it on me. Ah, oh, well, that's all right. Your ticket will be ready soon. Okay. Um, how many books am I allowed to take out? You can take four books out at a time. And you can also get two tickets to take out three magazines or periodicals. Newspapers, I'm afraid, can't be taken out. Oh, that's fine. Uh, do you have a record library? Some libraries do, I know. Yes, we do. You have to pay a deposit of five dollars in case you damage them, but that entitles you to take out two records at a time. That's good. Could you show me where your history and biography sections are, please? Yes, just over there to your right. If there's any particular book you want, you can look it up in the catalogue, which you'll find just around the corner. You can also find a touchscreen information service on level two. Thank you. Oh, and how long am I allowed to keep the books for? Well, the normal loan period is three weeks, with two weeks extension. Oh, dear. We're going away for four weeks. Can I renew them now? I'm afraid not. You must do that at the end of three weeks. I see. Thank you very much. Before the talk continues, you have some time to look at questions 7 to 10. Now listen to the talk and answer the questions 7 to 10. Well, let's go into some details. Your name, please, madam. My name is Barbara. The surname is Cooper. 
It's spelt as C-O-O-P-E-R. Fine. And what's your contact number? If we have new books coming, we can contact you in time. Good. You can call me on 723-6518. But it's better after 5 p.m. You know I have to work during the daytime. Do you need the office number? I don't think so. It's enough. Could you tell me the address? I lived in King Road, but of course you need my new address. Um, it's 25 St. Mary Road, Hanwell. That's H-A-N-W-E-L-L, -L. is that right? Yes. Do you need the passport number? I just brought it with me. Here you are. Yes, thank you. The number of your passport is G5798-0942. OK, and your ticket is ready. The number is M930123. Thank you. Could I take a look around and check out some books? Of course, as you like. That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Listening Practice Section 2 You are going to listen to two students talking about a presentation on time management. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 15. Hi, Mark. What are you doing? Hi, Lucy. Well, I, I'm preparing this seminar on time management. I'm supposed to do a presentation on the topic next week. Ironic, isn't it? I'm probably the worst student when it comes to time management. I don't think you're that bad compared to some other people I know. Do you need some help with it? Yeah. I just don't know where to start, to be honest. When are you doing the presentation? I'm supposed to hand in the draft on Wednesday at 11am. The presentation is scheduled for 10am this Friday. That's not too bad. This gives you the whole weekend to prepare. Let's brainstorm some ideas, shall we? Do you want to get a pen and paper to jot down some thoughts? I think you should start with a broad general statement. For example, I read somewhere that organising time is a skill like learning to drive or tying your shoelaces. Then you could move on to discussing the common problems people have with managing time. That's not a bad idea. One of the common problems is putting things off. Yeah, you could also mention some common signs of this symptom such as last-minute holiday shopping, pulling off visits to the doctors or the dentists. Another problem is relying too much on your memory and not writing things down. Do you mean not keeping a diary or a planner to plan the tasks? That's right. For example, writing down what I need to do in a diary or planner helps me remember what I need to do and makes me more focused on the tasks for the day. Good idea! Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 16 to 20.
Now listen and answer questions 16 to 20. That reminds me of something I've been meaning to do for a while now. Anyway, I should also include some advice on how to deal with the problem, shouldn't I? Sure, you can talk about some ways of stopping procrastination. I guess making a to-do list can help one focus on what needs to be done. Definitely. Another way to deal with the problem is to prioritise and do the hardest job first, the one which requires the most effort and concentration. Also, my tutor recommended that I should break big projects into small parts with a specific goal. Having an action plan has worked for me. I usually make a list of small tasks I need to do to achieve a goal. Sometimes I just don't feel like getting down to work because a task seems too overwhelming for me to even think about. This technique helps me reduce psychological pressure. If I think of a project as a set of easily achievable tasks, don't you think? I know what you mean. I often feel like that myself with the statistics project I've been doing this term. I'm well behind and the deadline is next week. I think setting deadlines and sticking to them can help one to achieve goals. You can discuss this aspect in your presentation too. A good point. Setting deadlines can also help one become more realistic about the time it takes to do tasks. Another point you could include is how to deal with interruptions. OK. I guess blocking in time to handle unpredictable interruptions can help one stay focused. Not just that. Some interruptions, such as phone calls, can be easily avoided by using answering machines, for example. Saying no, which is one of the most useful words in English, is also very effective. It can be tough, sometimes, but you've got to learn to say it nicely but firmly. I think you've got enough ideas here to start with. Definitely. Thanks a lot for your help. I just need to type the ideas up and I think I'm all set. Do you think you can lend me your laptop for a couple of hours? Mm, I'm afraid I can't. I've got to finish my own project. Never mind. I'll use one at the library. You certainly know how to say no. <laughs> Learned it the hard way. Got to go now. Good luck with the presentation. Cheers. See you later. That is the end of section two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Section 3. You will hear two medical students, Caitlin and Hideki, discussing options for courses. You now have 15 seconds to read questions 21 to 23. Hi, Hideki. How are you? Fine. I'm glad I bumped into you. Have you got five minutes to sit down and discuss our extra course options for next term? Yes, yeah, sure. You mean the support courses for our modules? Yes. We've got three choices, and I'm not sure which would be best for us to do. Let's have a look. Um, yeah, we could do science and ethics. Sounds quite interesting. Yes, but I think we should be thinking what we get out of each course. Mm. So, science and ethics. There's a lot of reading and research to do. And I don't think it comes up in the exams, does it? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, 
Oh, I see we have to do assignments and we get our score from that. But what it would do is to force us to get better at doing essays and reports, you know, organizing them and using the right kind of language.、Mm. Might be worthwhile. Yeah, you're right. An alternative is the pharmacology prelim course. Oh. I think it's in case we want to go on to transfer to pharmacology at the end of the year, because lots of students do.、Mm-hmm. So it depends what we want to do in the future. But apparently, they send you off to find out about various companies and the differences between their products. It would give you lots of practice in investigative studies and analysis. I think I'd quite enjoy that. Yes, I see your point.、Um, then the other option is reporting test results. Sounds a bit boring. Not sure why they have a separate course just for that. Well, I could certainly do with some help in that, because if you go out into industry, that's what you'll spend most of your time doing.、Mm. So it's got a very practical application.、Mm-hmm. I think I'm going to go for pharmacology. Me too. You now have thirty seconds to read questions twenty-four to thirty. So let's have a look at it in more detail. Oh goodness! If we do pharmacology, then we have to do a supplementary maths course. Oh no, that's not fair.、Mm. Mind you, I think I need it. <laughs> Does that mean we have twice as many lectures? No, this maths is only a short course. The chemistry department are responsible, and they do it in the third term. So we've got all next term to settle into the pharmacology bit. Oh, I find the tutor makes a real difference. Some of them make chemistry so easy, and some of them I can't understand at all. Like that one we had from Oxford University. Oh, <laughs> mind you, the one on this course should make sense because he's a lecturer who's coming in for a few weeks from industry. So at least it'll be linked to the real world. <laughs> yeah. The project we have to do on this pharmacology course is huge, and it doesn't give us much time. We have to make a decision about what we want to do on the project as soon as we start in January, and then hand in our plans before the end of the month. Doesn't give us much time to sort out what's possible or not.、Mm. I mean, doesn't the scale of our project depend on what resources we can have, like what equipment we can use? I suppose so, though I think there's plenty available. For example, it says that if we need to do any experiments, then we can use all the equipment in the new lab, as long as we book it. Oh, okay. It's slowly beginning to take shape for me. I think it'll be a good course. I'm just worried that I get enough support to do it.、Oh, I think you'll be okay. And the tutors are always available if you get stuck. No,、oh, actually, it says that if you are not sure, then in December they'll be running one or two additional seminars. So I might go to those. Actually, what's quite interesting is that at the end of the course, when our project is completed, then we have to do a presentation on it. Oh, I think that's quite good practice. Oh, a bit scary though. <laughs> well. It shouldn't be too bad, as they say that we can do it in pairs,、oh. spread the load, as it were. <laughs>、oh, good. I have done presentations before, but I'm always very nervous. And is the presentation what we're assessed on then? Let me look.、Um, ah, it says that we have an interview, and we get a mark for the whole course depending on how well we do in that. Oh right. Okay. That is the end of section three. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
on page 56. Section 4 You will hear a talk about memory in babies and young children. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. We are going to look today at some experiments that have been done on memory in babies and young children. Our memories, it's true to say, work very differently, depending upon whether we are very old, very young, or somewhere in the middle. But when exactly do we start to remember things? And how much can we recall? One of the first questions that we might ask is, do babies have any kind of episodic memory? Can they remember particular events? Obviously, we can't ask them, so how do we find out? Well, one experiment that's been used has produced some interesting results. It's quite simple and involves a baby in its cot, a colourful mobile and a piece of string. It works like this. If you suspend the mobile above the cot and connect the baby's foot to it with the string, the mobile will move every time the baby kicks. Now you can allow time for the baby to learn what happens and enjoy the activity. Then you remove the mobile for a time and reintroduce it some time from 1 to 14 days later. If you look at this table of results, at the top two rows, you can see that what is observed shows that two-month-old babies can remember the trick for up to two days and three-month-old babies for up to a fortnight. And although babies trained on one mobile will respond only if you use the familiar mobile, if you train them on a variety of colours and designs, they will happily respond to each one in turn. Now, looking at the third row on the table, you will see that when they learn to speak, babies as young as 21 months demonstrate an ability to remember events which happened several weeks earlier. And by the time they are two, some children's memories will stretch back over six months, though their recall will be random with little distinction between key events and trivial ones, and very few of these memories, if any, will survive into later life. So, we can conclude from this that even very tiny babies are capable of grasping and remembering a concept. So, how is it that young infants can suddenly remember for a considerably longer period of time? Well, one theory accounting for all of this, and this relates to the next question we might ask, is that memory develops with language. Very young children with limited vocabularies are not good at organising their thoughts. Though they may be capable of storing memories, do they have the ability to retrieve them? One expert has suggested an analogy with books on a library shelf. With infants, he says, it's as if early books are hard to find because they were acquired before the cataloguing system was developed. But even older children forget far more quickly than adults do. In another experiment, several six-year-olds, nine-year-olds and adults were shown a staged incident. In other words, they all watched what they thought was a natural sequence of events. The incident went like this. A lecture, which they were listening to, was suddenly interrupted by something accidentally overturning. In this case, it was a slide projector. 
To add a third stage and make the recall more demanding, this accident was then followed by an argument. In a memory test the following day, the adults and the nine-year-olds scored an average 70%, and the six-year-olds did only slightly worse. In a retest five months later, the pattern was very different. The adults' memory recall hadn't changed, but the nine-year-olds had slipped to less than 60%, and the six-year-olds could manage little better than 40% recall. In similar experiments with numbers, digit span is showed to vary. That is the end of section four. You now have half a minute. Các bạn cần chú ý, cần phân bổ thời gian cho phù hợp, luyện tập thường xuyên và đều đặn. Mỗi ngày luyện nghe ít nhất từ 30 phút, hoặc nếu có thời gian hãy luyện từ 1 đến 2 tiếng. Còn bây giờ các bạn cần chia sẻ kinh nghiệm gì, hãy để lại bình luận ngay phía dưới cho thầy nhé.